All right, I am trying to do a couple uh, non-standard problems here to get you ready for the test out of our section about integration and its applications. So this is a Simpson's rule problem where suppose we have this curve defined as it is on this grid and we're rotating it like this around the x-axis. We've got um, eight disks that are going to be used with Simpson's rule to approximate the volume. So you have to Imagine that this is being rotated around like this, so I've got kind of the mirror image approximately like this, not doing a very good job of sketching it out, but it's, it's rotated like this. So we're getting these disks that are happening um, in eight different intervals. So just to um, make it easier to explain, I've taken the x values, so we're starting at 2, and then because it's going from 2 to 10, um, that is uh, 8. Um, units and then we're going um, with eight discs. They're going every one unit, so it just goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then I looked at the graph and I wrote the function value at each of those intervals. Okay, and then if you think about <clears throat> the way we do this, is we imagine the cross-sectional area of each disc as we get to each one of our stations, like that. So there's a disc and then a disc. So that's just going to be the radius squared. So I've squared all these radii. 2 squared is 4 and so on. And then when I square all those radii, I multiply them according to our Simpson's rule multipliers. So SR multiplier. And that's just remember, we go 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4 on into sundown, but then we add a 1 at the end. If we have an even number of intervals and we start at the beginning, we'll get that odd pattern where we can begin and end with 1 and go 4, 2, 4. So then we're just multiplying the Simpson's rule multipliers. And then I've done that. And then once we get that, we add them all up. We sum them. And then don't forget, out front goes our Simpson's rule uh, multiplier, which is delta x over 3. 3 applies to Simpson's rule. And uh, then because I'm doing cross-sectional area where it's radius squared, that's pi r squared, and way, way out front was my pi. So this is what I get approximately when I multiply that by one-third and then stick a pi on and then I distribute the pi in. This would be the actual numeric and that would be units cubed, whatever that is. Okay, so just by contrast, if we were not using disks, if we were using shells, then it would look something like this, where now, the same exact thing, if I'm multi uh, rotating it this way, and I again get this mirror image like this, that our shells then are going to be going parallel to the x-axis. This is a representative shell that would be going around like this, making, there's the cross-section of the shell, right? So you have to imagine these shells are starting at the x-axis, they're expanding this way and going out to sweep out the volume. So we're orienting it now along the y-axis. And I decided to do um, intervals um, with eight with eight shells. It would be then um, at zero, and then at one half, and at one, and one and one half. And there would be my eight shells going all the way out. So I've listed them. And then I had to, using the graph, say what is the height of the shell so I just sort of counted the squares going across and I think I lost a little bit of accuracy in my hand drawn you could go back to the book and compare with what I've got here but I was saying that the first one is of course 8 pretty sure about that then I went with these values there's no squaring in this case because remember we're really integrating from A to B the circumference which is 2 pi r and then we're multiplying that times the height, and then we're doing delta, in this case, delta y, as we go across the y-axis, all right? So when, uh, when I get to here, then, I'm simply multiplying these two values, 